morning all and today I'm going to try and fix these two or at least one of these two power tool batteries which I bought on eBay. Uh, I paid about £22 for the pair of them including postage so about £11 each. Now these are, that one's a bit scratched, these are 2.4 amp hour so they're the big ones they have 10 18650s, 5 on the top row and 5 on the bottom. There's a little push button um, power meter which does nothing. This should light up either red, orange or green to indicate how full the battery is. That doesn't work. Now if I put a charger on here, let's put this um, slow charger on which doesn't charge too aggressively because I don't want to uh, overcurrent them if they're not in good health. It appears to start charging and the power meter then does light up that's saying it's completely flat but it doesn't keep going for very long and then you get an error where they both lights flash and it's basically saying there's something wrong with this battery so let's get both of these things uh, opened up and um, have a look inside see what we've got I have already been fiddling with these so they're not quite as I purchased them. Now there are four screws on the bottom and these are Torx T15 security with the little hole required in the screwdriver. So let's get all of these out. Now this end's opened up but here there's a clip so I need to force that clip out on both sides. So it's that way. And that comes apart. Now I've put a screw in there and I use that to push the sort of connector block down. And that's got the top cover off. And there's the circuit board. Now there's a plug and socket there which goes to the um, little tester circuit. So move that across. These uh, press in side pieces come out and then the whole block lifts out of the uh, bottom part of the case. Now this is rather worrying. There's some serious bubbling going on. But that's actually on the negative terminal. It looks like perhaps the spot weld penetrated the uh, casing of the cell and something is venting out there. I'll keep an eye on that. So now let's test the cells. Uh, this end cell has zero volts. Next one, four. The next one, four volts. The next one is four volts. And the one at the positive end is also four volts. So it's just the one at the far negative end that's dead on that one. And on this one, the one at the negative end is dead. The next one is pretty much dead. Then we've got 3.81, then 3.83, and 3.92. So the three at the positive end are good. Now I only need one pair of cells for the other battery to make that good, so I'm going to take the far positive cell pair out and put them in the other battery pack. Now there's a plastic separator between the top row and the bottom row. So the bottom row cell came out quite easily. That's one of the dead ones. This is the other dead one. So I think I'm going to have to cut across here and then on the other side uh, cut here and then slide this cell through the plastic. Break a little bit of this plastic away and slide that cell out. Let's give that a go. So that's the two faulty cells cut out of the negative end of this battery. Now I need to take the good cells off the positive end of this battery and uh, put them into the, the other battery. So I'll keep cutting that. So I managed to slide these out keeping that welded strip in place. Had to cut that one of course. And now I'm going to try and slide that into there 
and then join all these cut strips back up. So the cells are back in, minor injury to my finger. Uh, I'm holding them in with rubber bands at the moment because there's nothing holding this bottom cell in. Now the question now is how well is all this metalwork going to solder back together? Um, and I've got my solar tabbing bus wire to bridge any gaps like this gap here where I had to cut away too much of the metal. So I'm just going to test on these sticking up bits of tab how well they take solder. Oh, they do seem to take it reasonably well. You have to get it fairly hot, but this is quite a hot iron. So that looks promising. Let's see how we get on. So that's all gone reasonably well. Now I'm just going to do the last piece of tabbing wire on ca camera. Oh, that uh, spat solder at me. That seems to be going on quite well. Don't want to make it too hot, but that's fine. I'll let that cool down for a bit now. Now, with those repairs done, I'm just keen to know what the battery thinks of its new cells. Well, it seems happy. So I'll just remake some of those joints, or at least finish them off to uh, my satisfaction. Get rid of these rubber bands and put the covers back on. Now, these joints aren't beautiful because you don't have a lot of time, really. You've got to make them quite quickly. You don't want to be uh, holding a hot iron on near these lithium cells for too long. But I think they're good enough to uh, handle the current of a heavy-duty power tool. The vacuum uh, cleaner is 7.5 amps, so I've got to be sure that they'll handle that. And then on the other side, it looks like this. Again, with a little bit of that solar bus wire bridging the gap where I cut away uh, too much of the mm, connector strips for it to reconnect. But that all looks reasonable. So let's put the cover on and get a power tool. Now, as well as the uh, green light coming on when I press the test button, I'm also going to do a voltage check. So that's the far negative and that's the far positive. And we have 20.3 uh, volts, which is about right for this pack when it's fully charged. Good. So before I put the screws back in, let's try a drill. That seems to be all right. Let's look at the battery while I'm drilling. So when you put load on the battery, the uh, colored indicator is going from green to orange, immediately orange, to red. So this may need a charge. Let's give it a try. So while that's charging, I'm just going to put uh, the screws back in. Right, so while my new battery is charging, I should just talk about the risks of repairing power tool batteries. Uh, you saw one of them, I slightly cut my finger there. But mainly I want to talk about um, the dangers of these lithium cells. Now when I was cutting the strips with my wire cutters, I was being very mindful of where the rest of the metal of the cutters was. You've got to be very careful, you're not going to short. Um, see if I bridged across from there to perhaps that connection, that might short out a cell and that could be very dangerous. So you must be very careful. You watch where your metal work is so you're not shorting out and potentially creating enormous currents. Now the other thing is when I was soldering I used a very hot iron. Hot iron is good. If I'd used a feeble iron I'd have been there for ages waiting for the solder to melt and everything would have got hot. The cells would have got hot. With a hot iron I can get these pieces of metal strip on quickly and there's much less danger of overheating a cell. Now something else that I noticed while taking these apart, there's a lot of rust. This rust color is on the blue foam, it's inside the battery case, and it's around a lot of these spot welds. And I suspect what's happened is these uh, power tool batteries have been left in a shed or something like that. They've got damp and rust has built up. And this is the cell that was bubbling and there's rust all around there. And I suspect that the spot weld has thinned the metal 
and um, the rust has then weakened it still further and that's why this one was was actually leaking so certainly there's a lot of rust there certainly I would say don't leave your power tools uh, the batteries certainly well and the tools um, anywhere damp now this charger is actually saying that the battery is full but the power meter is a bit half-hearted and undecided about whether it's actually full or half empty so this may not be a particularly uh, successful thing so what I'm going to do is put this power tool into use uh, this battery sorry into use and uh, just see whether this is a, a worthwhile thing to do it may not be because uh, as I say the other cells are probably fairly well used um, I think I'll just go and get the uh, the vacuum actually the seven and a half amp power tool so here we are this is the uh, battery that I've just fixed and here's the vacuum cleaner and as you can see it says 18 volts at seven and a half amps so uh, oh what's that look a little piece of blue foam that came out of one of these cells that looks like it needs vacuuming up <laughs> doesn't seem to be uh, dropping down in pitch that seems to be working so I've made uh, one possibly good battery out of uh, two dead ones now if I buy another one of these batteries um, it's perfectly possible that I could make two good batteries out of three dead ones and then if I carry on three good batteries out of four so there is a temptation to get some more of these and make more good battery packs um, out of the dead ones.